and welcome to the channel Gang Gang and Peanut, two peas in a pod. What a gorgeous day it is today. It's positively tropical here in the greenhouse. It is 25 degrees in here. Crikey. Although outside it's not 25 degrees. But the sun is shining. The days are drawing out. We're getting more and more daylight. And March is a good time to be sowing some tomato seeds. Now, the compost that I'll be using today is just a general multi-purpose compost that I bought commercially. I have sieved it so that it ends up quite fine, quite soft. And it's a very, very, very nice compost. And it's nice and soft so that once the seeds germinate, the roots can push their way through this, it's nice and soft, and start their journey to growing into a big tomato plant. Now, what I normally do is I would fill one of these trays. Very handy little tray, and it comes with a lid. However, today I'm going to be filling one of these. This is a food container. I think uh, some kind of a takeaway meal came in it. I'm just going to fill it up to about there with some compost. Lovely. I'm going to water the compost and the reason I water it first is if I water it after the seedlings are in it may wash the seedlings out and this water has been in this bottle in the greenhouse well it's been sitting here for a while and as I say it's quite warm in here so this water is actually a warm water now I shall get the seedlings and these are a bloody butcher and if you've seen my previous videos, you'll know these are one of my favourite tomatoes. Oh, if I can get the seeds out. There we are. And they're tiny. They are a tiny little seed. But these tiny little seeds will grow into quite a substantial sized plant. The bloody butcher are what's known as an indeterminate variety. Which means they'll keep growing as long as the conditions are good for them to grow in which means once they start, they'll keep growing until the end of the year, weather dependent, light and heat. So they are an indeterminate variety. Let's sow a few in there. I don't want too many, because if you sow too many tomato seeds and you end up with too many seedlings, and you move them all on, you'll end up with far too many tomato plants, and you'll be trying to give them away to your family forever and a day. So. In that side of oh, the bloody butcher, and I'll put a label on that in a second. And in this side, I'm going to sow some Crimson Crush. So we'll just put these Crimson Crush, we just scatter them lightly on the top. Again, not too many because I don't want too many plants. I have in the past sown the whole packet. I didn't know what to do with the seed seedlings in the end, there was too many of them. So they're nicely sown in there. I'm going to because they're a small seed, you don't need to bury them in, a, in an inch or two of compost. Just a very light covering over these very tiny seeds is all they're going to need. So we'll do that, a very light covering. Just like that. So they're in there. And what I will do is I will take these indoors where it's slightly warmer because although it's March the temperatures can get quite cold of, of a night time so I will take these indoors and I think in about five to seven days these seeds should have germinated and I should see some little seedlings starting to appear once these seedlings do appear they will need to be moved on to some pots and a good way of moving them on is to plant the seedling in one of these pots. These are a three and a half inch pot that you would fill halfway with compost. And then you plant the seedling into that compost. And as the seedling grows, it will outgrow the top of the pot. And you can add more compost to the half filled 
compost that's in there already. And there's a good reason for this. If I planted a seedling in that and it's half full and it then grew out and I put some more compost in, if you look at these tomato plants, you can see that they have tiny hairs along the stems. You can see them. And if you plant the seedling in there and then top it up with compost once it's grown higher than the pot, these hairs will start to form roots and will find their way into this extra compost that you put on the top and it will make it a much stronger plant. That's what I done with these. I filled it up to there, planted the seedling and once it had outgrown the pot I topped it up and hopefully under there this little plant the hairs that were on the stem are busy beavering away making some roots and making it into a really strong plant. Now I mentioned that these two varieties, the Bloody Butcher and the Crimson Crush, are an indeterminate variety of tomato. And as well as indeterminate varieties, there are also what's called determinate varieties. And that is that how they grow and how long they grow is predetermined. So it's determinate. And the determinate varieties of tomatoes are normally a bush tomato, which are ideal for growing in containers or fairly large pots so big. Um, they tend to grow to a fixed height, give or take. Uh, they flower, they fruit, normally in a very short space of time it's completely fruited um, and then the plant starts to die off. So you have indeterminate, which do what they like, and determinate, which do as they're told. So they go from a tiny seed to a seedling that will appear here to a very juvenile plant to a growing plant to a plant that eventually will sit in a pot in here on the floor and will definitely reach up and across the ceiling during the course of its lifespan. So that's how I sow my tomato seeds. Tomatoes do suffer with uh, being attacked by one or two pests and the biggest problem of all that tomatoes face during their growing season is the one of blight. Blight can decimate an entire crop. And one of the ways that I try to avoid the blight is I buy blight resistant varieties, which I will grow outside. Doesn't mean they can be completely blight free. However, they do have some resistance of varying degrees. Or I will grow them in the greenhouse if they are like the bloody butcher, if they're an heirloom variety, an old variety, they'll grow quite, quite happily in the greenhouse. And whenever I water them, I try not to get any water on the leaves because this can attract a start of blight on the ones that are not blight resistant. They can also suffer with um, blossom end rot on the fruit, which is something we'll get to in a later video once these get to the stage where they're fruiting as well as various little pests, such as white fly and red spider mite. But again, we'll talk about that in a later video once these things start to grow and you need some more information to be able to take care of them. Now, tomatoes can be grown in the greenhouse or they can be grown outside in the garden, in the, in the ground or an allotment, uh, in which case I would advise probably a good idea to look at the blight resistant varieties or they can be grown in containers uh, and containers are fantastic for growing the determinate or bush type of tomato they can be grown on a patio they can be grown in a, in a container perched on a wall anywhere but there's going to be some sunshine because that is what they need to grow and to ripen the fruits once they start to develop so decide on which variety you want get sowing. Once your seedlings are through and they're growing on into healthy plants, don't worry, I'll be making some more videos to guide you through the stages of growing tomatoes. Now if you like my videos,
please give me a big thumbs up or hit the subscribe button down the bottom there somewhere or leave a comment and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So until next time, as ever, take care. Bye. Is it on your new leaves? No, not on my leaves, that's good. Boop.